A revolution is a fundamental change in power or organizational structures that takes place in a relatively short period of time. Aristotle described two types of political revolution, complete change from one constitution to another, modification of an existing constitution. Revolutions have occurred through human history and vary widely in terms of methods, duration, and motivating ideology. Their results include major changes in culture, economy, and socio-political institutions. Scholarly debates about what does and does not constitute a revolution center around several issues. Early studies of revolutions primarily analyzed events in European history from a psychological perspective, but more modern examinations include global events and incorporate perspectives from several social sciences, including sociology and political science. Several generations of scholarly thought on revolutions have generated many competing theories and contributed much to the current understanding of this complex phenomenon. Etymology Copernicus named his 1543 treatise on the movements of planets around the Sun de revolution ibus orbium coolus time and this has come to be the model type of a scientific revolution. However, a Euro or a revolutionary Euro is attested by at least 1450 in the sense of representing abrupt change in a social order. Political usage of the term had been well established by 1688 in the description of the replacement of James II with William III. The process was termed the Glorious Revolution. Apparently the sense of social change and the geometric senses in surface of revolution developed in various European languages from Latin between the 14th and 17th centuries, the former developing as a metaphor from the latter. A Euro Oe revolt a Euro as an event designation appears after the process term and is given a related but distinct and later derivation. Types There are many different typologies of revolutions in social science and literature. For example, Classical scholar Alexis de Tocqueville differentiated between political revolutions, sudden and violent revolutions that seek not only to establish a new political system but to transform an entire society, and slow but sweeping transformations of the entire society that take several generations to bring about. One of several different Marxist typologies divides revolutions into pre-capitalist, early bourgeois, bourgeois, bourgeois democratic, early proletarian, and socialist revolutions. Charles Tilley, a modern scholar of revolutions, differentiated between a coup, a top-down seizure of power, a civil war, a revolt and a great revolution. Other types of revolution, created for other typologies, include the social revolutions, proletarian or communist revolutions, failed or abortive revolutions, or violent versus nonviolent revolutions. The term revolution has also been used to denote great changes outside the political sphere. Such revolutions are usually recognized as having transformed in society, culture, philosophy and technology much more than political systems. They are often known as social revolutions. Some can be global, while others are limited to single countries. One of the classic examples of the usage of the word revolution in such context is the Industrial Revolution, or the Commercial Revolution. Note that such revolutions also fit the slow revolution definition of Tocqueville. Political and socio-economic revolutions, perhaps most often, the word revolution is employed to denote a change in socio-political institutions. Jeff Goodwin gives two definitions of a revolution. A broad one, where revolution is. Any and all instances in which a state or a political regime is overthrown and thereby transformed by a popular movement in an irregular, extra-constitutional and or violent fashion. And a narrow one, in which revolutions entail not only mass mobilization and regime change, but also more or less rapid and fundamental social, economic and or cultural change, during or soon after the struggle for state power. Jack Goldstone defines them as an effort to transform the political institutions and the justifications for political authority in society, accompanied by formal or informal mass mobilization and non-institutionalized actions that undermine authorities. Political and socio-economic revolutions have been studied in many social sciences, particularly sociology, political sciences and history. Among the leading scholars in that area have been Aura Crane Brinton, Charles Brockett, Faradee Fari, John Foran, 
John Mason Hart, Samuel Huntington, Jack Goldstone, Jeff Goodwin, Ted Roberts Gurr, Frederick Halliday, Chalmers Johnson, Tim McDaniel, Barrington Moore, Jeffrey Page, Vilfredo Paratu, Terence Ranger, Eugen Rosenstock Huesi, Thedas Scockpol, James Scott, Eric Selbin, Charles Tilly, Ellen K. Trimberger, Carlos Vistas, John Walton, Timothy Wickham Crowley and Eric Wolfe. Scholars of revolutions, like Jack Goldstone, differentiate four current generations of scholarly research dealing with revolutions. The scholars of the first generation such as Gustave Le Bon, Charles A. Elwood or Pityrim Sorokin, were mainly descriptive in their approach, and their explanations of the phenomena of revolutions was usually related to social psychology, such as Le Bon's crowd psychology theory. Second-generation theorists sought to develop detailed theories of why and when revolutions arise, grounded in more complex social behavior theories. They can be divided into three major approaches, psychological, sociological and political. The works of Ted Robert Gurr, Evo K. Fabrand, Rosalind L. Fabrand, James A. G. Schwinder, David C. Schwartz and Denton E. Morrison fall into the first category. They followed theories of cognitive psychology and frustration aggression theory and saw the cause of revolution in the state of mind of the masses, and while they varied in their approach as to what exactly caused the people to revolt, they agreed that the primary cause for revolution was the widespread frustration with socio-political situation. The second group, composed of academics such as Chalmers Johnson, Neil Smelser, Bob Jessop, Mark Hart, Edward A. Tyriakian, Mark Hagopian, followed in the footsteps of Talsalt Parsons and the structural functionalist theory in sociology. They saw society as a system in equilibrium between various resources, demands and subsystems. As in the psychological school, they differed in their definitions of what causes disequilibrium, but agreed that it is a state of a severe disequilibrium that is responsible for revolutions. Finally, the third group, which included writers such as Charles Tilley, Samuel P. Huntington, Peter Ammon and Arthur L. Stinchcombe followed the path of political sciences and looked at pluralist theory and interest group conflict theory. Those theories see events as outcomes of a power struggle between competing interest groups. In such a model, revolutions happen when two or more groups cannot come to terms within a normal decision-making process traditional for a given political system and simultaneously have enough resources to employ force in pursuing their goals. The second-generation theorists saw the development of the revolutions as a two-step process. First, some change results in the present situation being different from the past. Second, the new situation creates an opportunity for a revolution to occur. In that situation, an event that in the past would not be sufficient to cause a revolution, now is sufficient. However, if authorities are aware of the danger, they can still prevent a revolution through reform or repression. Many such early studies of revolutions tend to concentrate on four classic cases a Euro famous and uncontroversial examples that fit virtually all definitions of revolutions, such as the Glorious Revolution, the French Revolution, the Russian Revolution of 1917 and the Chinese Revolution. In his famous The Anatomy of Revolution, however, the eminent Harvard historian, Crane Brinton, focused on the English Civil War, the American Revolution, the French Revolution, and the Russian Revolution. In time, scholars began to analyze hundreds of other events as revolutions, and differences in definitions and approaches gave rise to new definitions and explanations. The theories of the second generation have been criticized for their limited geographical scope, difficulty in empirical verification, as well as that while they may explain some particular revolutions, they did not explain why revolutions did not occur in other societies in very similar situations. The criticism of the second generation led to the rise of a third generation of theories, with writers such as Theda Skokpol, Barrington Moore, Geoffrey Page and others expanding on the old Marxist class conflict approach, turning their attention to rural agrarian state conflicts, state conflicts with autonomous elites and the impact of interstate economic and military competition on domestic political change. Particularly Skokpol states and social revolutions became one of the most widely recognized works of the third generation. Skokpol defined revolution as rapid, 
basic transformations of society's state and class structures. Accompanied and in part carried through by class-based revolts from below, attributing revolutions to a conjunction of multiple conflicts involving state, elites and the lower classes. From the late 1980s a new body of scholarly work began questioning the dominance of the third generation's theories. The old theories were also dealt a significant blow by new revolutionary events that could not be easily explained by them. The Iranian and Nicaraguan revolutions of 1979, the 1986 People Power Revolution in the Philippines and the 1989 Autumn of Nations in Europe saw multi-class coalitions topple seemingly powerful regimes amidst popular demonstrations and mass strikes in non-violent revolutions. Defining revolutions as mostly European violent state versus people and class struggles conflicts was no longer sufficient. The study of revolutions thus evolved in three directions, firstly, some researchers were applying previous or updated structuralist theories of revolutions to events beyond the previously analyzed, mostly European conflicts. Secondly, scholars called for greater attention to conscious agency in the form of ideology and culture in shaping revolutionary mobilization and objectives. Third. Analysts of both revolutions and social movements realized that those phenomena have much in common, and a new fourth-generation literature on contentious politics has developed that attempts to combine insights from the study of social movements and revolutions in hopes of understanding both phenomena. Revolutions have also been approached from anthropological perspectives. Drawing on Victor Turner a Euro unregistered trademark s writings on ritual and performance, Bjorn Lamarsson has argued that revolutions can be understood as a Euro o liminale Euro moments, modern political revolutions very much resemble rituals and can therefore be studied within a process approach. This would imply not only a focus on political behavior a Euro o f from b lower Euro, but also to recognize moments where a Euro o i and lower Euro are relativized, made irrelevant or subverted, and where the micro and macro levels fuse together in critical conjunctions. While revolutions encompass events ranging from the relatively peaceful revolutions that overthrew communist regimes to the violent Islamic revolution in Afghanistan, they exclude coups d'a copyright tats, civil wars, revolts and rebellions that make no effort to transform institutions or the justification for authority, as well as peaceful transitions to democracy through institutional arrangements such as plebiscites and free elections, as in Spain after the death of Francisco Franco. See also, political warfare, psychological warfare, rebellion, revolutionary wave, right of revolution, subversion, lists of revolutions, list of fictional revolutions and coups, list of revolutions and rebellions, list of uprisings led by women, bibliography, the International Encyclopedia of Revolution and Protest, 1500 to the Present, ed. by Emmanuel Ness, Malden, Massachusetts, etc. Wiley and Sons. 2009, ISBN 1-4051-8464-7, Perosazine, Emile, Les Libre Copyright Ro Face Ora Copyright Volutions 1688, 1789, 1917, 1933, Commentaire, Spring 2005, pp. A 181 a Euro 193, References External links, Hannah Rent, IEP.UTM.edu, On Revolution, 1963, Penguin Classics, New Ed Edition, February 8, 1991. ISBN 0-14-018421-X, Interface Journal Special Issue on Crises, Social Movements and Revolutionary Transformations, Demon B, Revolution in Political Risk Management, John Kex, City-Journal.org Why Robespierre Chose Terror. The Lessons of the First Totalitarian Revolution, City Journal, Spring 2006. Plinio Caridi Oliveira, tfp.org, Revolution and Counter-Revolution, Foundation for a Christian, 3rd edition, 1993. ISBN 1-877905-27-5, Michael Barkin, zmag.org, Regulating Revolutions in Eastern Europe, Poliarchy and the National Endowment for Democracy, November 1, 2006. Poliarchy.org, Poliarchy Documents, Revolution, DailyEvergreen.com, 
Vive la ra copyright volution. Revolution is an indelible phenomenon throughout history by Qasim Husseini, Ernest Mandel, The Marxist Case for Revolution Today, 1989.